Good morning, September the 1st, 2014. This is CISG 114, Section 2, Web Technology and Life. Today is the first class in the second week of the semester. So let's get started. Good morning. Welcome back to the second week of your study in this course, CISG 114, Section 2, Web Technology and Life. Okay? So let's get back to where we were as of last week. Here we go. Um, starting the semester last week, we introduced you to this very important course support environment website. So I hope with the weekend passing, all of you, including at least some of you, have spent time coming back here and study some of the important information on this website, all right? So the whole semester's core material, it's available here. Now, the question is, how can we turn the information here in such a way that we can use them the best we could in order to enhance the learning? So this week, we introduce to you to the Moodle environment Okay, to put the environment for this course. Remember, this is my course list. You have your own course list too, that this is section two. So the Moodle environment for this course is here. So the Moodle environment of this course for this semester, it's built on top of the course support environment that I just showed you that I have introduced to you last week. So here we go. The Moodle course environment has a title, which is CISG 114-02 Web Tag and Live, with the parenthesis for 2014, all right? So when you enter this environment, you are sure you're not in 2013, 2012. You're in 2014. And the big title is Course Information. This first block of the Moodle environment is called the Housekeeping Block. And the Housekeeping Block gives you first hand the PDF versions of the syllabus here. I expect that each one of you should have finished reading the syllabus by the end of this week. Okay? Make sure this is a very important routine of your study throughout the semester. Now, I'm grateful at the beginning of the class today, or better say before the beginning of the class today, someone asked me in this part, do we have any homework to do? Well, we do not have homework in a sense like a secondary school. They, namely, I do not give homework on the class. But as I explained it last week, we do have three major assignments in this class. And each one of these is considered as a learning contract. And there are three major submission day, one for each learning contract. And you need to read the syllabus and read information here to understand when you're going to submit the first artifact. And let me give you a secret. It's coming on week number four. You need to submit the first learning contract artifacts. So what do you need to submit? Well, we have already touched that last week. I'm going to tell you a little bit more towards the end of today's class. So the housekeeping block of the Moodle environment gives you some idea to keep track of. First of all, I still stick to this song as the theme songs of this semester because it matches well with the intentions of the teacher. The second thing is the GE handbook. The GE handbook for this year is here. You can click on the link and you can read the GE handbook and you see the differences between the previous years. And then the calendar, you read the calendar here, if you know which days are supposed to be holidays, and you do not need to come here. Um, and then, this is very important, it's the University of Macau's rules of handling student dishonesty, academic dishonesty. Namely, uh, it's applicable in many cases, but in the context of this course, it's expected you do not copy anything from your fellow students and consider this to be yours, okay? And we very much cherish students' integrity and you do something on your own, we give you enough time, opportunity, 
to learn from your mistakes, but you do not support any dishonesty. Okay? So you read this and you understand the possessions of the university. And the university also supports anyone with a physical disability to learn. And so in case you do have to need a mount or something or anything, we have to make sure that you understand it. We could support you in case you need it. And um, in the context of many classrooms in the secondary school, we do see st uh, students coming in with wheelchairs. They really cannot move the body, but they use the breathing, eyesight control, the reading and yeah. typing, right? So, and then we do have some tools for you. Well, if you are uh, Chinese and English, we have three of them English, Chinese, dictionary. English, English, dictionary. And if you need help in English, this is a side character. All right, having said that, at the very beginning, <coughs> we have an attendance call. We're going to demonstrate with you today how we're going to make attendance call. And then anything, including teacher's message, will be channeled out to all of you through the class announcement of news uh, side. So including uh, these two messages that I sent earlier yesterday, including message for this week and a message for last week. And then I create a social forum for each one of you to participate in the class to share your ideas for the whole class to join, to, to give your feedback. So here is a forum of very much welcome every one of you to come in to share your ideas sometimes. And I do have a Dr. Vance Kidney Post hotline, which is a dedicated hotline for each one of you. Now this is a public channel. If you share something here, the whole class can see it. So this is a private channel. It's just like an email, individual. You and I only, okay? Not any one of your fellow students can read it. This is a private channel, all right? So you're an individual and join this private hotline, all right, for the whole semester. So if you have something you want to share, maybe you are sick or you do not want to take this exam or whatever it is, so you can share it. Right. So this is the housekeeping block for me to help keep you in touch and also for you to help keep me in touch. All right. So communication is very important. It must be 24-7. You can always use them. And normally, if you give me a message here, I can fit you back within hours, okay, and not within minutes. All right. So now let's take a look at the first week. The first week means last week. You can see that each block, subsequent block, <coughs> is going to be positioned like every week. So we have 14 weeks together, so each week we're going to have a block like this. So the first week means last week, it's week number one, that starts from August the 25th and ends of August the 13th. We have two days together. The first day is August the 25th, the second day is August the 28th. Respectively, on Monday, the first day, and we meet here at E4 1051. Now, if you look at the syllabus, we have the theme of the screen that is called what is information security, what is information privacy. And actually, uh, if you allow me to say, it's a bit sticky. It should be coming to terms of Web 2.0. I can fix it. I can see that. <laughs> I have too much information. But any other things, it's okay, all right? Because this is web technology and I. But the second question is still very important. I remember I put it over there. So now, in the first learning contract covering the first four weeks, we are going through a method of learning called the IBL, the inquiry-based learning method, which is a big contrast to the lecture-based learning, which traditionally is a transmissive method. A teacher here talking and helping you to understand the topic by doing but you can see that although we have the textbook, well, I, I do not want a lot of emphasis that you need to buy a textbook. That reason is very simple. I do not want to give you all the fishes in it. I want to give you a fishing rod and how to learn how to do fishing rod. So IBL is a very important way for you to learn. We call it inquiry-based learning. Put it in a very soft manner. Inquiry-based learning requires of you to ask a lot but how can I ask questions? Well, we, we start by classifying questions 
are into essential questions and non-essential questions, and then we start our by choosing topics of interest. Okay? Asking questions, asking essential questions. We do not ask non-essential questions. And we start by choosing topics. Alright? So we every week we have a small housekeeping block here in each week. That is the teacher's message at the beginning of the week. And then I'll give you a piece of music to lighten up a little bit. And then I'll give you some advice on how to get the most out of study. These are excellent advice in the form of very some video produced by the original accent. And then you can see that on each week we have the reading list for that week and also the video list for that week. And if you are so much used to lecture based learning that this teacher guiding you, you can always come back to the learning practice. That is designed based on your textbook. So even though you do not buy your textbook, you can come to learn and practice. I've already put everything important on the textbook here. They have to go through the process. You see, some of the students told me, oh, Dr. Bad, I'm so used to teach a center coach. If you could just give me some skeptics to go through, and then I've designed this. Alright? Not everyone of you want to take this part, but it's always a safety thing. Okay, sketch and at the beginning of each week, uh, before you come to class, before you come to class today, before you come to class on the first day, read this a little bit. I, this is my little bit of my expectations. During class, what I'm supposed to do, and after class, and after the week. So these are um, another way to help you to become a self-regulated learner. Okay? A lot of the time, we do not know how to manage time. We do not know how to manage time when the task will need to finish. We do not know how to be on task and on target. Well, I experienced the problem, so I provide a little bit of the scaffold here. So you know that this is the structure we go through every week. And it's your responsibility to fulfill each one of this. All right? There is no such thing as submitting homework, but there's a lot of things that you need to be following through uh, what we call a learning habit, a habit of learning that is very much expected of a college student, all right? So, day number one, last week, we introduced you to the support website, and so in the support website, you see all this link, and I sincerely hope that most of you have already gone through, read them through, understand the expectations and the specifics there, all right? So if you don't do it, it's not good, all right? It's not good, because Responsibility is the bottom line, all right? And then day number two, last first day, we're supposed to have some understanding of that, and we've not gone through them because we experienced the difference in my classroom environment. The best things about the UN model environment is, even though we don't have much time in class to go through all of these, because it's already there, now it's your time at home, drinking coffee or whatever you want, some of the have an intellect in the bathroom too. And then you, you study a little bit of this. Most of these are video. So okay, you study them. It take you five minutes. And these two are powerful and excellent information about the design of the general education. And of course we do have class videos, but it's taken me longer than expected this time to convert on the Sony to the MPAN. And so uh, it took me, I'm still in the process of conversion. But uploading to the YouTube, it's another thing. So probably by tomorrow you can see that if not by the website. The link, all right? The video links. So now we're going to selectively come back to some of this, but make sure you spend time watching it, all right? To get some impressions about it. And allow me to point out that this is a very good question. Is where technology making my life better? It could be a very good question. You need to think about it, right? When it's all for discussions, topic is what technology making the life better. And we might we might want to have a debate. You can say yes, or you say no. Give some reasons about this and how to see we can exchange. All right. So at the end of each week, I would better say not at the end. Um, throughout each week, I'm going to give you some tools. Okay. So you have the tier number one is your online learning journal. This is your electronic notebook. I'm going to give you a new electronic notebook at the beginning of each week. So you can use that, which is only your notebook. You can only see it, I can see it, not anybody else can see it. You use it to keep track of your learning, the books taken, uh, 
after you select a topic. And then if you have already done some study and want to share your knowledge with the whole class, with the whole class, you can come to the public or knowledge discussion forum and type in something based on the notes taken or your based on the journal materials. That is very useful for me. That means you do internalization of the knowledge and then you construct something you want to share that something with someone else. And you have nothing to lose. And once you share your idea, people can give you feedback and you start exchanging that class. That's a good way to learn. So so learn. And then for each week, I can also give you an idea, I did give you documents QA online as a private channel again. Only you can read it. If you have questions to ask me, that gets continued. You can use the QA hotline. This is a basic area discussion forum. I can engage in this in discussions. And then for this week, I want you to think back on what your experience of last week's first week of class and complete this question there before tomorrow. Okay? So if you ask me any homework, well, I allow me to say that maybe tonight the homework is to complete this question there. Okay? Just click into this thing and, and choose something and you can type in something. Soft questions, alright? Just to let me know a little bit of the feedback you can give to me on the Nostrils experience. So, remember, it's not a homework, but it's my sincere invitation and you complete this before tomorrow, that means before 11.55 tonight. Okay? Go, go home, get on the eye, come to this link, click on it, and complete the question. Okay? Before tomorrow, before 11.55. So again, this is the teacher's message link. Let's take a look at the teacher's message. This possible. If you look at the teacher's message of this password, which I issued yesterday, together with the second teacher's message, you see that I've given you some links on the specific background on general education at the university now. You still are the very early batches of students at the university now to do general education. So I want you to know something specific about the education reform here the general education program, the architect, which is our former vice director, Professor mm -hmm. Sanya Ho, and the rector's message, and the specific syllabus, all right? So essential learning outcome is also very important knowledge in the native solutions of the general education program. It seems to be more defined as essential learning outcomes of general education. And then, if you pay attention to some of the conversations we got, we went through last week. We try to give you a picture on the differences between general education and the disciplinary education and what is meant by the content versus the process type of education. And in this course, I put a lot of emphasis not just on the content, but in the process of your learning. Because it, there's no magic. Okay? It is not that tomorrow I have to submit something so tonight I'm going to come up with something so that I can submit tomorrow. No, you cannot learn anything by doing this kind of trends. So the process requires time. It requires how you lay out your learning path, your different time investments along the way. And traditionally speaking, we do conference-based approach. We cover the topic. We use tests to see how you can manage the master. Is it not really ability based education? So sometimes it's very much discouraging. It's optimative in a very subtle time. So we instead we come back to the question of interest based education. Interest based education is based on freedom to choose. That's why when I design this course, you have reading this question, you have given an example of the information item. You try to pick what interests you. But of course, the, the rationale is you must find the school's interest in the you know, if your client's not interested in you. And then active versus passive of learning. Active means you have the motivations generated inside of you. Passive means not much motivation, not even intention. Normally, it's something that you feel forced to do something. Now, how can
can we transform to learning from being active, from being passively listening to a teacher, to actively constructing the knowledge. This is a skill. And if you can do active learning normally, you are doing deep learning, which you can retain the thought for a long time. But you, you're just doing passive learning. It is called surface learning. You can easily forget the knowledge. Now we discovered that uh, passive learning is normally connected with transmissions. Active learning is normally constructive or connected with constructivism. So we want to make sure you understand the process. And then normally, transmission is connected with teacher-centered environment. So that means we've been doing a lot of teacher-centered environment through transmissions, but we're generating a lot of passive learning. In the States, or in Europe today, so we are talking about we need to return the, um, the, the command of the student. The student center means they need to learn to learn rather than talk to learn. When they learn to learn, they're doing constructive study. And they, when they're doing constructive study, they have a deep way to learn, which is always connected to active learning. So that is very interesting. And when we say that um, if we can do student center, normally is no longer an individual. In the past, it's it's one to many. It's a teacher stand here facing a bunch of students. So each student's attention is on the teacher. They're waiting for the teacher to give command. But in today's active learning classroom, it's no longer the teacher who's giving command. The teacher is a collaborator. The teacher serves as leadership to collaborate with students. And so group involved learning is very important, not just an individual. Right? So this is a message to give you a sense of the environment we have now in this gene course, because as I said at the very beginning, you will consider as an adult, no longer a kid. All right? So, so towards the end of this teacher's message, I share with you a little bit of your responsibility, my responsibility in this class, and I also invite you to put some thinking into these two approaches. The comfort, comfort approach, and the anchor approach. This is very much characterized by the secondary schools in Macau, and this is very much characterized by um, the World Cup University today. Anchor, we must help our students learn to learn. That means we must help our students to have the ability to ask good questions, essential questions, and once they have the motivation, on, then you go on that home. Okay? So if you try to do some comparisons of this. Um, so having said that, let's go back to this very interesting week number two. In week number two, again is day number three and day number four this time I do not screw this up. The, um, starting with week number two, we start with module one. In module one, we talk about information technology of our society. But we share with you a little bit about the context of technology, okay, and then what is meant by information technology. And again, this week we have a teacher's message, and the how to learn the best, I introduce you to five most essential soft skills, which you can watch them, uh, presented by, by another professionals to read them, and we also have readings for week number two, readings for week number two. Again, you can use the learning practice for contract one, and to this way, again, we have one class, the right class, after class, and kind of activities. And so, if you look at day number three, we need to tell you something about inquiry based learning. Okay? So, that is today. And if you look at the tools that you can use before we come to day number four, again, I gave you a new, first of all, nine learning general, which is for week number two. A new public online discussion for week number two, a new document to an A for time for week number two, and a teacher's message for this week. So every week you can see the pattern. Okay? I'm giving you enough of what I believe to mobilize you to do it on your own. So let's go back. Let's go back to what we need to talk about. I want to let you know a little bit about active learning. 
okay, so you understand all the patients here. Then we go through the graph. So let's go have to do active learning. What is active learning? First, active learning involves teaching techniques that are something other than straight lecture. Second, active learning is not an entire project or assignment, but a much smaller task you give your students. However, a project or assignment can have several active learning pieces within it. Third, in order to consider something active learning, students must be doing something including discovering, processing, and applying information not just listening to a lecture or reading a PowerPoint. Active learning can take many different forms, and instructors often use different strategies in face-to-face -face and online classes due to their differing approaches to teaching and learning. For example, in a classroom, the instructor might ask each student to turn to their neighbor and discuss a particular topic. In an online course, the same exercise can be accomplished using a discussion thread, document sharing, or instant messaging. The idea is the same, but the approach is different. So what about these examples are considered active learning? In our face-to-face -face class example, simply having students turn to their neighbor and discuss a topic is active learning. In the online course, having two students discuss the same topic via a discussion thread is active learning as well. Research shows that students learn more when they're engaged in active learning. It's important to remember that lecture does have its place in both face-to-face -face and online environments, However, during active learning, students are involved in much more than just reading or listening, and more emphasis is placed on higher order thinking skills, such as analysis, synthesis, and evaluation. Further research has shown that students retain 70% of what they say and write, and they retain 90% of what they do. Compare this with the fact that students retain only 10% of what they read and 20% of what they hear, and you'll start to understand why active learning is so important. Now that we have an understanding of what active learning is and why we should implement it, let's look at some specific examples to give you a clearer picture of what constitutes active learning in practice. Let's take the example of a small group discussion. In a face-to-face -face setting, you might group students up and ask them to discuss a particular topic. While this alone is active learning, you can add to the exercise by asking each group to present their findings to the class in the form of a standard presentation a radio or TV commercial, or a comedy skit. Now let's look at a small group discussion in an online course. You can group students into separate discussion threads and have them discuss a particular topic. Again, this alone can be considered active learning, but you can add to the exercise by having students present their findings using various Web 2.0 tools such as recording a presentation with a PowerPoint or Prezi, submitting a voice thread with audio and a series of images that relate to the topic, or present their topic in story format using Google Maps. As you can see, the possibilities are virtually limitless, so be creative. Both our face-to-face -face and online active learning examples cover the higher order thinking skills of analysis and synthesis, but what about evaluation? In this example, it would be quite easy to hold a peer review of each presentation. In a face-to-face -face class, you can simply have students give their opinions on how appropriate each group's observations were and how well they presented the information. This should spur more conversation with the guidance of the instructor. In an online course, peer reviews can be held using a simple discussion thread or a voice thread. So what about these examples are considered active learning? In our face-to-face -face and online class examples, the small group discussion is active learning, as is the preparation for the presentation, the presentation itself, and the peer review of the presentation. Each step in the process is itself a distinct active learning strategy. Since students retain more information during active learning, simply stated, active learning equals better learning. Okay, now you heard this very simple digital story of voice over some PowerPoint which is presented in crazy. I would like to use the following Okay? Groups of four persons. Now, 
please go ahead and turn your head and follow your group of four persons. We're going to 15 minutes. Let you do some kind of discussion. Okay? Once that has been done, we're going to move into the topic of today. Move! Move! You need to go! You need to go to find two persons, three persons, sit together. It's too comfortable to sit tonight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. Group together. You can sit on the floor. Okay, if you like, if you want to turn your head, it's okay. One thing that is not good about this chair is you cannot turn it. Okay? Groups of four persons, okay? And uh, let me see how many people here. I hope we're paying and when you talk, it's better when you can face one of these things. So, if I were you, I would buy some condom, okay? Occupy some condom, okay? And then talk to one another. Yes, thank you very much. One is missing. We need one more person here. Who is ready to come here? One more. One more. Now go. You need to face one another. Yeah. And face one another and talk. All right? Now, do you understand the question? Do you understand what is meant by active learning? Do you agree with anything they say? Do you disagree with anything they say? Name one, two, not more than three points of interest for your sharing. Okay? And when you do that, talk to one another. You see, I like this room in such a way that it's not flexible. Good for lecture base, but it's not good for collaborative lessons. Talk and use one piece of paper, one person serve the secretary to join down some low. The other people just talk and then you can do some kind of sharing. If you have the iPad, you can use iPad's notebook. If you do not have the iPad, use a very simple piece of paper. Now we can afford a lot of 15 minutes to do this kind of discussion, but there is a reason we need to do it. Okay? Okay, you just have two persons? You have three persons. Now I tell you this, one stay here, one go there. Alright? They have three. Okay, don't be shy. Alright, I have Victor here. You are V Esta. V stop. Okay, V stop. So come, 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 come. And then you come, you go over. Go over. Okay, come on. Introduce yourself. You have about three girls. In Chinese, we call some No, don't Just grab one seat. As I said, the best thing is just you talk. We used to have group work, okay? In, in, a, in all campus, we have a collaborative group. We have a circular team. But here is a new campus, so that you need to <laughs> Could I invite you to sit on the floor? It's the clean. Four person group. It's, it's a good enough area. So it's a very wonderful place. Have you ever go to camp? When you go to camp, you have to sit on a circular manner so you can have 10 to 15 minutes time talking. Yeah, it's wonderful. Please, have to say, introduce yourself. All right? So, you, you class me, it's such a wonder. Okay, talk. That's good. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. With seven groups, all right? Seven groups. Remember, ask what is meant by active learning. Why is it important? Do you agree with anything they say? Do you disagree? Name one, two, not more than three things to share. It could be positive, it could be negative. Okay. Make sure you have your personal opinion about it. All right. I'm not here to sell that approach, but I think there's a lot to talk about. All right. I'm going to time you. I'll give you ten more minutes. You need to have a secretary in your group who is responsible for keeping track of some of the ideas. All right, a piece of paper, some ideas in one form, not in a long post form.
the reporter say something on your side or someone else's side, all right? So you need to learn how to mix ideas together in your group.
minutes left. Sometimes time is a precious resource. You need to put things in a small time frame. What do you get? You see, this, this is very smart work. They rewatch the video. So make sure you bring in some devices you can do some online learning. Very good. Now remember, when your group is invited to share the ideas, you have not more than two minutes because we want to fit all the seven groups in a 15 minutes slot. Okay? Well, you can say not more than two minutes and 20 or 30 seconds. And something like this. Let's say this is one, two, three, four, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay? Now your number, you know, remember the number. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, over there. Okay? Today's day is 2014, 0901, okay? So, I'm going to add 2 plus 0 plus 1 plus 4 plus 0 plus 9 plus 0 plus 1. That is 3, 7, 16, 17, okay? 17 mark 7. Mark means get the remainder. Get the remainder. It's a uh, three. So group number three is the first. Okay. One, two, three. All right. So this is order. So this is uh, number one. You know, the first group has an advantage that you can always do selections of which is the second one. You can tell. You just select, oh, this is the second group, your name. You put a number in there. Okay. All right, time's up. It's now 12.15. May I invite your reporter from group number three to come up here? Yeah, come you need to come up here. Yes. And share with us your group based perspective on active learning. Anyone from your group? Have you discussed who's the reporter? Oh great. Thank you. I'm sorry today's microphone does not work. So you might need to speak up a little bit, alright? Uh, introduce yourself a little bit and your group member too, alright? So we can uh, listen to you. We are all around here. So group number seven, uh, could you make yourself a little bit visible to listen to group number three? You can start now. Introduce yourself in group number. Three. Thank you.
Thank you very much. Thank you very much. You used your time very well. All right. So, can we remember your name again? Sue. We thank you, Sue, for helping us to understand their group's perspective. Now, if you happen not to remember a few points, you have a chance to go to talk with Sue's group after the pre after the sharing. Okay. Now, Sue's group. Would you please name one group as the second to share? Would you please name one group? Which group? Okay. We don't have much time left, okay? Quick. Which one? Number seven. So, number seven is the second one. Number seven, could you come up here? So, introduce yourself and a little bit of your perspective. Thank you very much. I'm sorry today's microphone does not work. Uh, hi, my name is Selena. I'm from Group 7. So, um, we have discussed and that our main concept of active learning is basically interacting and getting your, out, out of your comfort zone and learning in another way, uh, having another perspective of uh, learning by interacting with your classmates, um, having debates, discussions, projects, and all the other types of things that we don't normally do in classroom and just listening professors talking. And uh, my group, we actually do agree to it, but we have a little bit of disagreement, disagreeing to this uh, passive learning, is that the good thing about active learning is you can get out of your comfort zone, you can improve your communication skills, get your own independence, and at the same time, you, um, the stuff that you learn in class while you're interacting, getting ideas from others, stuffing it into your brain, it will be easier for you to actually memorize, not really memorize, but understand the main concept that you guys are talking about in class. So it will be easier for you to actually remember it and understand it because you have other people's perspective with yours, so infused together. But the negative thing is that for some people that are not really well with the communication skills, that will be really hard for them to actually adapt to that type of um, circumstances in a way that they're not comfortable with communicating with others and talking to others. So that would be hard for them. And at the same time, sometimes you have to get information by yourself and gather it by yourself, and that could not actually be very accurate. So that's also another problem. And sometimes it can be more complicated and leading to stressful type of environment that you build yourself into. So that's right. what we have discussed. Thank you very much. I think they have given a very good picture on balancing the, the pros and cons, right? So now, could you name one group to be the next one? Number five. <laughs> number five. So, number five. One, two, three, four, five. Right. Thank you very much.
Um, could you name one group to be the next? Six. Six? Mm -hmm. Six equal to six. So, oh, anyone? Thank you very much. Yes, from SPC. <laughs>
but I expect each member in your group to at least participate in posting three times. Okay, at least three times. The first time is to post your perspective on is web technology making your life better. Your personal perspective, okay, individually. You say something, okay. You might want to tell what is meant by web technology to you, what is your experience about this, and because of that experience, I consider the answer to this question is yes or no. Okay? You must first share your personal experience. Alright? And the second part, the second one is once you have seen your fellow group member has posed something. Put some thought into it and try to respond to it. Okay? Now, three is actually not enough because you have four members there. If you try to respond to one per one perspective per member, you have to do four times. But I think three is the basic. Okay? And if you want to respond more, go ahead. I encourage you to do that. And then on the first day, when we come back, again we will spend 15 minutes time listening to each group, your perspective on that question. Is web technology making my life better? Okay? Now, there is no such thing as one answer for all the group. But definitely, just like today, you're trying to discover who is going to be your responsible on that on first day. All right? Not necessarily the same member today, but you try to express yourself there. It's a very important thing that we should have done last week. That is called coming to terms with Web 2.0 in our day to day. All right. So we are coming to discuss this in the context of answering as a person the question: Is web technology making my life better? You share with your whole group your personal experience of using web technology, for example. Facebook. Okay? For example, you post, you have to take a picture and post it online. Alright? And then, um, for example, we're going to see a little bit more on first day. Okay? And remember, what you need to do before the end of today is you complete the questionnaire that I mentioned, and then provide the information of your learning partner. Okay? Provide information to the learning partner by copying this particular table. All right. Here we go. This is my second message. At the end of my message of this table, okay? Copy this table like this. You copy this and go to this particular hotline for week number two. All right. And you add one discussion topic. And that is called my learning partner. Okay? And after you copy that, you paste it here by control V and you write down your information here, your partner's information here. Every one of you need to do that, okay? Before the end of today too. If in case you cannot do it because you have not found a learning partner, you still have a chance to do it before the end of this person, okay? But do not go beyond this first day without learning to okay? All right? So this is, you copy this table from teacher's message week number two. From that, you print into Dr. Burns Q&A hotline week number two. You paste it here by creating a discussion form. You enter this information. At the end of that, how do you do it? You post to the forum. Once you click the post to the forum, you will see your LinkedIn. Okay? Remember, you will see something like this. Remember, this is your personal channel. Only I can see it. Okay? And you can see it. No other one in this class can see it. Alright? Thank you very much. Now, before you go, allow me to give you this. Woke up this morning, I suddenly realized we're all in this together. 
and I started smiling Cause you were smiling and we're all in this together I'm Mayor Adams, you're Mayor Adams and we're all in this together And long division just doesn't matter cause we're all So if you discover that you cannot go into Dr. Brent's hotline for week number two from inside my teacher's message, just go outside, go back to week number two, go down to the tools you can use. There, we have to populate, right? You can definitely go in there. Because a lot of you are trying to get into Dr. Brent's hotline through my message, and there is some kind of difficulty. Okay. In, in case you encounter that difficulty, go back to the main page, go down to week number two, and under week number two, you will have some tools. One of the two is exactly that Dr. Brett's hotline QA group. So there, you can do it. Okay? Now, yes. Thank you. 
Discussion forum for week number one. I would like each group here. We have seven groups done, right? To go to that public online discussion forum for week number one and discuss the question: Is web technology making my life better? Okay. Now you in your group. Just add the new discussion topic and say if you want to identify because it's a public discussion forum, right? You say group one. Discussion. Group two discussion in the topic. Then you can, if you have been in with group one, you go back, you go to group one's discussion and follow the link by pressing reply, reply, reply. Okay? Any one of you set up the question? Group one. Okay? Question one, or group one, question two, or group one, Ada, or group one, Billy, it's okay. And then you just press it reply to reply respond to it. And you just need to respond to your group's discussion at this point. So in order to sort out, you're following the right discussion group. It's highly suggested when you set up the discussion thread using your group identity as the heading. Okay? If you do not use the group identity as the heading, then it will be a little bit confusing. Alright? Alright? Oh, the journal. I'm going to elaborate more on the journal on first thing. Don't worry much about it. Yes. Now, 15 minutes to 1 o'clock. If you have class, you can go. If you do not have class, you want to stay and ask questions, you're welcome. All right? We'll see you on first day by giving you more on the journal. All right? Thank you. I can host the learning time.
这里起码有五十个人成立这样的公司啊，你交不了这个。那、嗯、你不是说你那个，他他他不要那么早交呀？Okay, that's it for today, CISG 114, Section 2, Web Technology and Light, on September the 1st, 2014.